Welcome back to Escapement and Watch. I'm Falling Titan and we are revisiting my Sego 5 Sports mod. Why? Because I remodded it, new and improved. Let's begin introducing the Seiko SRPE 53. And look at that. Right away, you can see the dial has changed. We had the Blue Lagoon before, but now we went with the Dark Knight dial. Now the Dark Knight dial matches that chapter ring much better. The chapter ring is very dark blue and the blue lagoon dial we used to have on here was a light blue. So there was a contrast. It wasn't a seamless transition like this dial because this dial fades to black on the borders. It meets up nicely with the dark blue chapter ring and it pairs up perfectly. I just think it looks so OEM and original, even better than the original, I think. When this watch comes from factory, I do have some issues with it. The dial has slender indices. Because this dial is off a turtle, we can call it maxi style indices, which suits the watch much better in my opinion, because this watch is kind of thick. It has a lot of visual weight to it. A thick bezel, really thick crown guards right there. What are they? Of course, the iconic SKX crown guard style. So very bulbous, round, thick looking visual weight to the watch. And when you add thin indices, it didn't match in my opinion. So these maxi indices, it just suits the watch better. And on the old mod, we had male and Lynx oyster style, which of course added to the visual bulk especially right here in this area. And maybe I'll put up a photo. You can see there is a lot of bulk down there, a lot of visual mass. I wasn't a fan of it. Now we went with the female end links and the beads of rice, trimming it down and slimming it down, creating a little bit more of a balanced look. And I feel like now the watch is more cohesive. I think visually, I pulled it off. What do you guys think? Let me know down in the comments below. I think we're gonna get a 50-50 split here and that's absolutely fine. Okay, these are the measurements that I got. 39.9 in diameter, 12.0 thick, ultra slim, including that brand new sapphire, which did add 0.2 millimeters and the new case back that I have on here, we're gonna discuss later and a lug to lug of 44.5. Amazing wearability, especially with that cushion case. This watch is magical. With these dimensions, it is a go anywhere, do anything watch for basically every wrist, a Goldilocks zone watch. That's why this watch has sold so well for Seiko. Let's check out the bracelet. Okay, here it is. This one is a beautiful beads of rice for the Omega Speedmaster. It is made by Uncle Seiko and the end links do not fit normally. You have to shape them, okay? So they come in tight, you have to pry them open and then bend them. They are hollow so they're easy to work with but be very careful. I use a watchmaker pick right here. I put the watchmaker's pick in the end link and stretched it with this so it was even pressure. I used it to roll in and out of that end link. It took a while, but we did it. And just be patient. If you overbend it, you will ruin it. So be careful. And then once it's on, maybe push it down if you overstretched it, get it to fit perfect. And once it's done, you're gonna be so happy. So the trick to keep this solid, this is solid. There's never been an end link as solid as this on a Seiko. <laughs> How did we do it? We used Fat Boy Spring Bars, 2.5 thick diver style Seiko Fat Boys. However, the tips have to be 0.8 millimeters, okay? You can't use the 1.1 millimeter tips that you use on a Seiko diver. It will pop out, your watch will fall, it will drop, be careful and we do have drilled lugs. Everything else is solid. These are all solid links and they're beautifully machined. And of course they are split pins, not screws. And the fold over, you can see the Uncle Seiko logo right there. 
double push button deployant, and then we have the milled clasp. And there you can see the case back I was talking about. This case back is from the Seiko SKX 007 original case back. So I don't know if I increased the water resistance, but I tested it to 100 meters and it passed. So before it was a see-through case back style, which typically has a weaker water resistance. Now we have a pro diver case back on here and a little bit slightly 0.2 millimeter thicker sapphire crystal. Maybe I'm at 150 now, who knows? I didn't test to that high, only 100. Push pull crown. All right, hack and wine for R36. We added the Roman day disc, English Roman, very nice. And of course you see that second hand, it is black with a white arrow tip off a samurai. So I think it goes nicely with the black edges of the dial. Put a little bit of black in the middle with that second hand. What do you guys think of that style touch? If you guys want to know the part number, there it is. Okay, you can pause the video. I have another one here. I always like to keep these on hand because I love this second hand when I do mods. Now the Sapphire Crystal is from Long Island Watch and it is beautifully done with blue anti-reflective coating on the underside. Now, usually I'm not a fan of blue AR. If you know, if you follow this channel, you know that because it changes the dial color. However, this blue AR is very subtle, not too overpowering. So if you have a blue dial, I do recommend the blue AR. It's not bad and I think it's well done. The hour hand and minute hand I forgot to mention are from the original watch. It's only the second hand that we changed. Now the price is 450 USD. That is what I paid for the base watch and all the parts. The Sapphire Crystal from Long Island, the Beads of Rice from Uncle Seiko, the SKX case back, the Turtle Dial, the Samurai Seconds Hand, and the Roman and English Day Disc. So those are the added parts and I definitely elevated the watch. It feels so solid now with the solid link bracelet. The bracelet truly makes the watch sometimes and there was nothing wrong with the case before. It's a solid, beautifully done case by Seiko. But this bracelet just elevates the watch to a premium feel. And a big part of it is how solid the end links are. It's just perfect because of those fat boy spring bars. So everything feels tight, everything feels right. And yeah, I, I definitely think it's a fair price after all these mods and improvements for a go anywhere, do anything, watch 100 meters, water resistance, sapphire crystal, brand with tons of history. And of course this gorgeous iconic case shape in a slimmer, more sleek design. What do you guys think? Did I pay too much to mod this watch, 450 USD? Let me know down in the comments. Okay, here she is next to the SKX, its brethren, right there, where it gets its DNA from. Basically the same case shape with the iconic crown guard right there and that beautiful cushion case. A lot more sleeker and slimmer right here, even with the upgraded, the Sapphire added zero 0.2 millimeters just if you guys want to know and of course the case back added a little bit as well so 12 versus 13 and a half in thickness right there lug to lug i think two mils longer on the skx all right but it is a 42 so it makes sense this is so wearable for so many wrists this watch is magical. That's why I wanted to upgrade it to the max. I wanted to enjoy it and I really do. Here she is on my six and a half inch wrist and man, this thing is so comfortable. The beads of rice, definitely helping out. Ultra slim at 12, right there. And it just wears phenomenal. And it looks even better off camera. It's, it's just a great wearing sports watch. Seiko hit a home run when they made these no bezel SKX Sport 5s. Okay, what is the new weight with the new bracelet, the sapphire crystal, and the new case back? Ooh, 135 grams, excellent. So gonna be comfortable for 
all day, every day, sports activity, whatever you need it for. Let's check her out on the time grapher. Of course, this is my watch and I modded it. So I did regulate it for my wrist. So it's going to do pretty well. So I don't know if we really need to look at it, but let's look at it. Anyways, we're going to do eight rounds dial up. So right now we got one zero. 0, 0.0 beat error, 290 amplitude. It does have that three hertz, 288, sorry, not 288, 21.6 VPH, uh, 24 joules hack hand wind automatic, the 4R36. This is the original movement. It's not the NH36. I didn't change anything. So yeah, now we got 0, 0, 0, 2, 2, 1, and two more rounds to go. On the wrist, this does about zero to two on my wrist, wearing it daily. So it's fantastic. I can't complain. And look at that powerful amplitude in the eighth and final round, negative one. Okay, there is the loom shot. And look at that reflection on the edge of the sapphire. I think the sapphire is slightly different shape. There might be a little bit more of a rounded curvature creating that reflection. Very cool. And of course, the hand's all original. The dial is an original Seiko. And that second hand from a samurai. So great job, of course. No surprise here on the loom. It is a Seiko after all. Let's check her out in the low light. And as you can see, the visibility is fantastic. High contrast from the dark dial and those maxi indices and white hands. Very legible. This watch, I think, is well done. So I'm patting myself on the back. Sorry guys, cringe, I know. But um, I, I really do love it, I really do enjoy it. And I think I just balanced the whole watch out visually and I'm just so happy with how it turned out. What do you guys think? I know it's not gonna be for everyone, but I wanted to make a quick video updating you on this mod. And fun fact, I was wearing this watch when my daughter was born on April 30th, yes. So I didn't plan it, of course, I was just wearing this watch. I went to Kavars one day, I was picking up another watch and she started having the contractions and we went to the hospital. So when I look at this, um, I had this mod already complete. The only thing I changed since the birth was the sapphire and the seconds hand. So when I'm looking at this watch, because everything else was done, the beads of rice, the case back. When I look at this watch, I do remember me at 5 a.m struggling and oh man it was tiring looking down timing the contractions with this watch uh, i wish it did have a bezel <laughs> at that point in time in the hospital room i was like man i wish i had a bezel but <laughs> you know i didn't plan it so i just had to go and this was the watch i was wearing so 100 percent a keeper and yes if you like this video please like share and subscribe and i'll see you in the next one Man, this is pretty.